Welcome to SVG TV News and Sports for Thursday, October 24th. I'm Jimmy Prince with the details. A hearing for an injunction to stop the upcoming election for a new executive of the Public Service Union has been adjourned until Wednesday, November 6th. At an in-camera hearing today, the legal counsel for Kuz Vano asked for an adjournment which was granted by the court. The adjournment date agreed upon puts it at a day after the scheduled election by the PSU for Tuesday, November 5, 2013. According to information reaching SVG TV News, the PSU committee is expected to meet with their legal counsel as to whether to proceed with next month's election. Nico Sylvester, representing Coos Banner, the former president in the matter, says any election prior to the injunction will be wrong. Van Loo, who up until the last general meeting of the PSU was serving in the capacity as president, is challenging the interim committee with a lawsuit deeming the action to replace his entire committee as illegal and in breach of the union's constitution. That matter is expected to be heard in court on November 13th this year. As this country commemorates the 34th year of independence, opposition leader Anim Eustace is urging Vincentians to prioritize, rationalize, and cut to avoid going back into colonization. In his 2013 independence message to the nation, Eustace highlighted the need for persons to cut back given the harsh economic climate. The opposition leader added that he had expected certain adjustments to be made by the government to foster an environment that encourages private sector growth, but he said nothing seems to be happening on that front. Instead, the import project at Argyle is treated with all importance, while necessities like quality health care and support for agriculture and other productive sectors are ignored. Now, it is habit to thrust out our cupped hands towards certain foreign powers, the dangled trinkets. If we do not make an about turn immediately, we shall march inexorably to colonization. We shall become an economic colony, selling the primary good and buying the finished product. Mr. Eustace added that the Argyle International Airport has taken precedence while a number of issues are neglected. I expected as much of my country at 34, that we would soberly decide what was most important and eliminate and or cut down and the rest. Frankly, if we don't, we shall lose our independence. I expected that we would control our government expenditure by stepping up efforts to cut out waste and corruption and improve efficiency with a view to operating on a current account surplus. Let's stand once more on our own feet. We can accomplish what we will. Political activist Matthew Thomas is of the view that education is not more accessible now than it was before independence. Thomas was commenting on the education system that existed before and after this country's independence 34 years ago, that's on Hits FM 103.7 on Sunday, Thomas said in his opinion, a lot more was taught at the primary school level then. Primary school education went up to age 16. Yeah. And the subjects you did between age four, um, the, well, it's around classes, yeah. classes three to six, uh -huh. were in every way equivalent to the first three forms of secondary education. That's right. That's right. I challenge you. In interacting with the caller, Thomas added that back then there was an equal focus on skills training as well as academics. And educators would tell you today, CX is a watered down form of GC and, and senior Cambridge. Uh, Needle work and cookery and uh, all those things in, in primary schools. Yeah. <laughs> Gardening, every school had a, a, a almost, a a apart from the town, yeah. had a school garden. Some bizarre news now, a calf born with two heads and four eyes in the Lasso Fair Mountains was the focus of much attention today. The calf was discovered by its owner, George Young, this morning. Young relates to SVG Television News what he discovered when he got to his farm. When I, when I yesterday I come up, when, you know, come like when I go to you know, yesterday, you understand? Uh -huh. I see the calf look calf, you know, he dead, so when I go away to the calf, you know, he's going to head. And four eyes, you have four eyes and um, two parts of the two in the head. Mm -hmm. You understand? 
The Ministry of Education earlier today announced the seven recipients for the National Scholarship Awards for the academic year 2012-2013. The seven students were selected based on their performance in the May-June 2013 Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examination CAPE and the General Certificate of Education, the GCE A-Level Examinations. The students are Kyral Edwards, River Providence, Raheem Hall, Chantel Murphy, Stephanie Providence, Taj Lee, and Alana Kovabach. The most outstanding performance was recorded by K.L. Edwards, who gained the Grade 1 classes in Biology, Chemistry, Physics, Pure Mathematics, and Communication Studies. She also received a Grade 2 pass in Caribbean Studies. K.L. will receive the Prime Minister's Award for her outstanding performance in the examinations. Recipients of the National Scholarship will receive full funding for a five-year period of university study. Three additional persons have been added to the list to receive bursaries from the Mustique Charitable Trust to continue their education at the University of West Indies Open Campus. At yesterday's handing over ceremony, head of the UV Open Campus, Deborah Dalrymple, said 11 persons have been granted the scholarship so far, and after an elimination process from 22 applications, three were selected based on academics and other criteria. During the interview, we try to look for not only persons academic um, you know, capacity or what we think are their ability. But we look for more rounded people, people who are involved in the community. We have some very wonderful um, examples in front of us. Omar is going to be doing a BSc in management with, um, uh, um, with a focus on economics. Karenda is going to be doing a BSc accounting. And Laura Richards, a BSc in youth development. Administrator of the Mustic Charitable Trust, Lavinia Gunn, said that the trust will pay 60% of the recipient's tuition fees. They will also receive a laptop. The trustees feel very strongly that it's very important that the students do make their own financial contribution towards their studies. This, I think, helps people take on board the responsibility and realize that the actual destiny and the outcome of your studies is in your hands. But what we try to do is that the trust takes on the larger portion. In more scholarship news now, the Bank of St. Vincent and the Grenadines says it is honoring its corporate responsibility through the yearly scholarship awards program. At the ceremony Tuesday afternoon, 16 students received scholarships from the financial institution in five different categories. Acting manager of BOSBG, Bernard Hamilton, thanked the bank's customers for their support over the years. Hamilton said that without their customers, the bank would not be able to contribute to the future development of this country's human resources. It would not have been possible for us to be, to be making this contribution to give, in a way, give back to the society if it, if it wasn't for your support and your loyalty in supporting the bank. And where we are today, as a profitable institution, you have contributed in no small way towards that achievement. So I want, I want you to understand that this is a way of the bank reciprocating in terms of giving back to, to our society. Guest speaker Rhonda Dixon urged the students to continue to focus on their academic development by acquiring good thoughts. We can all strive to have good thoughts. I'm tired going to the schools and the degrading things the students would say and the teachers. We need to clean some thoughts up. And maybe you can begin today. You have started. And this bank Bank of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, it has made you part of the week. The scholarship recipients are Dandre Doni, Iman Ballantyne, and the staff children category, Azan Carr, Cruz Dixon, Jade Martin, and Micah Thompson. They were given the Educational Assistance Scholarship, while Rihanna Glynn and Nika McMillan received mortgage scholarships. Rita Alexander, Safia Nanton, Nicosia Oliver, and Natifa Snag received the Hard Area Scholarships, and Hassani Brown, Shanika Gregg, Lucian Mathias, and Alia Providence received the A-Level Scholarships.